Welcome to the Cross Canada Spotlight. I'm Mike Arsenault. Every week we take a look at a handful of the most interesting and entertaining stories produced across the Global News Network. Our first story this week from Nova Scotia has everything. An injured animal in need, making the best of a difficult situation, and a love story that has the potential to span decades. Meet Sherman, a 24-year-old sulcata tortoise at the Magnetic Hill Zoo in Moncton, whose head is as hard as his shell. He's very stubborn, so if he makes his mind up, he's going to go somewhere. If it takes him all day, he'll get there. And it's that sheer determination that has seen Sherman through some health struggles that started a few years ago. Back in 2019, we started to notice some mobility issues with him. The back end, he wasn't quite lifting it as far off the ground as he needed to. Sherman was developing painful pressure sores on his undercarriage. After consulting with vets in several provinces, a series of tests revealed that the relatively young tortoise had a non-cancerous growth on his spine, which was hindering his ability to move. Oh, pick him up. So Gabrielle and the zoo's carpenter got creative. They designed and built this handmade wheelchair that is giving Sherman a new lease on life. He can rest his whole body on it and doesn't have to worry about, you know, lifting himself up. Strapped to his shell, the wheelchair is giving his hind end the support it needs to allow Sherman to move about freely and regain his strength. And except for the odd tweak to his wheels... Right now we're seeing this drastic improvement in him, and I think that's what's really encouraging. The growth on his spine can't be surgically removed due to his shell, so Sherman will likely need his chair for his entire life, which could be 80 to 100 years. The chair doesn't seem to be slowing him down any, at least not in turtle time. The team has to keep a close eye on him because he tends to sneak away, possibly to find his main squeeze penny in the pen down the way. Are you going to find Penny? You got a ways, you got a ways to go if that's where you're going. He's always a hundred times more active when she's in the enclosure versus when he's in there by himself. So maybe it's not his stubborn streak keeping him going after all. Maybe it's true turtle love. Shelley Steves, Global News, Moncton. Great work, Sherman. Can I be the first to come up with their celebrity couple name? How about Perman or Shenny? Here's to many decades to come for Penny and Sherman. Our next story takes us to Alberta, where a lost sweatshirt turned into an outpouring of generosity to help support children's literacy. And it all started with a boy named Townsend. Like many eight-year-olds, Townsend Linder loves the playground and he sometimes leaves stuff behind. Like his new sweater, a birthday gift the Edmonton boy got from his aunt and uncle who live in Fort McMurray. My mom asked me where my hoodie was, so then I went and checked, it was gone. I felt sad and kind of angry. Townsend's parents used it as a teaching moment. He would have to buy a new one from the Fort McMurray store with his own money. My inner mom's like, no, I can't take his money. Maya um, used her kind heart and bought me a new one. Townsend decided to pay it forward, give his money to the school library. The store jumped on board with a project called Townsend's Book Drive. In just days, strangers donated $1,000, astonishing for a community facing so much hardship. First, it was the wildfires that ripped through in 2016. Last spring, a massive flood. Oh boy. Project Clothing was forced to shut down again. Last month, as COVID cases soared, a local state of emergency was declared. So much generosity has been shown and kindness has been shown to us. So I think it's just kind of in our DNA now. Like it's just, it's normal for us. Townsend delivered $1,200 to his principal. It goes beyond the school and its students. We always purchase books within our community. So there's a lot about Townsend's character. Uh, we are very proud of him. And a lot about the character of a community. Families looking past their own struggles for a boy they don't even know. I feel very happy and very generous. Kendra Slagoski, Global News. It's almost unfathomable what Fort McMurray has been through over the past five years. The resilience of that community is something to aspire to, that's for sure. 
Staying in the prairies for a story on one of the many amazing players currently playing in the PWHPA's Secret Dream Gap Tour. Meet Bridget Laquette, the first First Nations woman to make Team Canada's Olympic roster. Bridget Laquette's latest stop on her hockey journey has her in Calgary this week as she joins several other top female players for the final stop at the Canadian Showcase on the PWHPA's Secret Dream Gap Tour. And that's where her focus is. However, off the ice, the 28-year-old has been making a name for herself with various advocacy and public speaking roles. You know, it's truly an honor to be able to, you know, to be able to share my story, to, to you know, be that role model or ambassador. Thank you. In 2018, Laquette became the first First Nations woman to make Team Canada's Olympic roster. And since then, her off-ice contributions have become greater. She was recently named to the National Hockey League's Female Hockey Advisory Committee while also serving on the NHL Player Inclusion Committee, where she's not only a strong voice, but an inspiration. I didn't have that person I could relate to in terms of, you know, facing obstacles such as racism or, you know, living in, you know, an isolated community. So when I go out and I share my story, I'm able to relate to the kids a lot. However, Laquette did recently face some adversity as she was left off of Team Canada's Olympic roster for the upcoming Winter Games. But being the positive role model that she is, she's not letting this knock her down. It was pretty tough. Like I, you know, I'm not going to lie, I was, I was pretty bummed out for a couple of days. Um, but, you know, the work, you know, it doesn't stop there. You know, it's I'm not defined uh, from, you know, being at the next Olympic Games. You know, I, I had a goal to, to, uh, to play in the Olympic Games, to play on Team Canada, and I've achieved those goals. You know, it, it doesn't stop here. Um, you know, I, I have a lot a lot of stuff on the go in here uh, coming up, and um, I'm excited for the future. Taylor Shire, Global News. There's a great lesson there for all young athletes, how to respond in the face of adversity. Bridget was obviously disappointed in not being named to the Olympic team for a second time, but instead of feeling sorry for herself, she is using that as fuel to keep getting better. Sticking with the sports theme, there's a new golf variant that has started to spring up on courses across Canada. To be seen now to learn all about fling golf. British Columbia is blessed with some great golf courses. But now one of those courses is putting a new twist on the traditional green game. We are having so much fun around here with this. Club Shushwap Golf and RV near Salmon Arm has adopted Fling Golf. And so this becomes that. Instead of hitting the ball, you hurl it. You simply put a ball into the end of the fling stick throw it as far as you can down the course. In a kind of conglomeration, Nash says, between lacrosse and golf. No problem, I thought. I've played plenty of box lacrosse. So you can cross-check someone then? No, you cannot cross-check. Can you take the club and like draw it across their thigh and leave like a bloody welt? I don't think that's in the rule book. Can you hit someone, you know, in the back of the neck between the helmet and shoulder pads? Probably not gonna go well. Okay, well then it's nothing like lacrosse whatsoever. Once we cleared that up, I quickly learned that part of the beauty of fling golf is its simplicity. This. It's a one club wonder. When you're on the green, we actually have a putter on the edge of the stick and it putts virtually exactly the same way. The idea is to disrupt the game of golf, make it more accessible by playing to a wider audience and put some fun back in a sport that's seen a steady decline in popularity for more than a decade. I've got a lot of friends who have been so frustrated with golf over the years. I've seen clubs go in the pond, I've seen them go in the bush, and they never come out again. Allowing fling golf is brand new at Club Shushwap. However, the game itself has been around for a while. Next up is a new iteration of a favorite sport. But they're getting a big boost thanks to a big shark. And I'm not talking about Greg Norman. We landed a deal on the show with Daniel Lebetsky. In a deal that may see fling golf flung on a course near you, then Allen sold 25% of the company for $300,000 US. We've been laying the foundation for quite a while here and we were able to really take advantage of it um, on that night. And ever since then, things have been booming. Back at Club Shoe Shop, where they've just started renting out fling golf sticks, they're marketing the game as an easy to learn golf alternative that will hopefully attract new players to the course. You only need one little club uh, and away you go. It's as simple as that. It's a very easy game to learn and just as much fun, if not more, for some people. Near Salmon Arm, Travis Lowe, Global News. I'm currently trying to get better at real golf with my Drive to 300 Yards series for Global News. I've made some great progress so far, but if I stall just short of 300 yards, maybe fling golf will be my answer. 
Although I have a feeling most courses wouldn't be terribly enthused to have fling golf taking place on their course, but maybe that's just me. For our final story of the week, all of us haven't been able to spend time with friends and family, especially for major milestones. Well, one Saskatchewan couple found an interesting loophole to be together with their loved ones for their engagement. The whole proposal in Costco started off as a joke. Like it was, everything's locked down. We can't see our friends or our family. Like nobody can be around anyone. How can we even get married? And then it kind of rolled into like, a, oh, we should get married at Costco. What started out as a joke quickly turned into a creative way to legally have family and friends be in person for a special moment. A couple days later, I started thinking that actually might be a good place for a proposal because I can invite everyone. So I started reaching out to people to see what they thought. Um, they, some of the people laughed at me and said it was a silly idea. Um, some people said that's pretty awesome. I would say surprise is an understatement. <laughs> I was just expecting to go for our weekly Costco run, I guess, and it turned into something way bigger than that. <laughs> Tim Bamford didn't do the public proposal to go viral. He did it to share something with loved ones after a year filled with isolation for many. Our family and our friends mean so much to us, and I'm sure there's so many other people in the world that are missing out on opportunities with their family and friends too. So um, the biggest thing for us was that we wanted them to be there, um, and the fact that the majority of them could be there was just phenomenal. It was a great feeling. And for Amanda, a respiratory therapist with the Sask Health Authority, the moment of happiness was even more special. Since COVID hit last March, I've been working on the front lines in the community, so I've kind of been in the heat of all of it. And so this moment was extremely special for me because, you know, I haven't really seen a whole lot of positivity. And uh, yeah, it just really made my day or year, I guess. <laughs> As for the actual wedding, they're hoping for something more traditional. We're going to be waiting probably, so then we can invite all of our friends and family to have a rager party after. Whether or not Costco hot dogs will be on the menu at the reception, that's to be determined. Ian Duffy, Global News. I know they want to go the traditional route for the wedding, but I mean, they pretty much have to get married at Costco now too, right? I would 100% want the Costco tacos as the food of choice if I was doing the catering. Forget the hot dogs, those tacos are incredible. And now I'm hungry, so I have to go. That's it for the Cross Canada Spotlight this week. Be sure to watch Global News Weekend Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. on the Global TV app. For now, stay tuned for more news and weather.